And good morning and welcome to the virtual Gulf Coast Growth Show. I'm here with uh, Chad Burke, the President and CEO of Houston Port Region Economic Alliance. Again, we've been um, kind of on hiatus for a few weeks. There's some technical issues and then obviously a little bit of, of a shift uh, in how we operated and we've decided to take the show virtual for now. Uh, it's just going to be me uh, today. Uh, we're minus our co-host, uh, Clint Aiken but he's uh, actively involved in trying to get uh, uh, individuals and participants for our show. Uh, that being said, we wanted to get some valid information out to our audience and to our uh, stakeholders for the region. So uh, Chad, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, we're gonna make it a, a quick episode, but I think the, the overall consensus is what's happening, right? We wanna take a look at what's going on in the economy, uh, take a look at what's really going on behind the scenes in Petrochem, logistics, uh, some of the safety measures that are being taken uh, there in the port region. Uh, at the same time, you know, all the work that's being done behind the scenes. I think people lose sight of uh, our service organizations and, and our organizations like yourself, uh, local chambers, local uh, government offices, and, and really the work that's being done. I know you've been working tirelessly, uh, and so has your team. And so we'll get an update as to what's been going on there, and then uh, what next steps really look like as we start to, uh, you know, there was a big announcement last week that they're opening the economy. And so what does that really look like? And, and how, does, uh, how does that impact the Petrochem uh, role uh, as well as uh, logistics shipping, the port region, everything going on over there. So that being said, uh, without further ado, man, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about just kind of a quick economic update as you see it and uh, what you've been getting from a feedback perspective for the region. Well, thanks. First off, thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Appreciate the time to to kind of put some information out there. Um, and, and you and I talked right before we went on air that, um, you know, we chatted four days ago and things have changed a lot since, you know, just in four days. So things are ever evolving. Um, uh, uh, you know, we, we look at, at what's happening to the, kind of the, the macro picture right now, what's happening in the overall economy, obviously huge, huge impact to our our nation's economy, um, as much you know, most predictors um, uh, say that uh, that we'll see a 25% drop in GDP for Q2. That's an average. It goes from from uh, you know 10 or 15% all the way up to almost or over 50% on the prediction. So on average, a a 25% uh, reduction in GDP for Q2. So that's huge. Think about that. Even if it just hits the average, um, you're talking about a quarter. Of, of every bit of economic activity out there being, being just disappearing um, in a three month period. Um, so huge, huge impact um, for the overall economy. Unfortunately, you lay over that here in the Houston or, or Texas area, um, what's happening in the, um, the, the oil and gas or crude oil side of our business, the upstream oil and gas. I just glanced over this morning. You know, we had some good news a couple of weeks ago with some reductions um, in, uh, in production, um, but then I, I glance over this morning and crude has dropped almost nine percent uh, just today, down to eighteen dollars a barrel. So you've you've got just shock waves and, and continued uh, reductions that are going to have to happen um, in Texas oil and gas industry, the upstream, the exploration, the drilling, uh, the midstream, the, the the movement of that crude oil, and then what we do with it when it gets here to the to the to the Gulf Coast. Um, storage is a capa uh, storage capacity is is a real issue now as we um, as we as we uh, produce more than we can manufacture more than people are are, are burning in fuels um, our uh, our refining uh, uh, capacity utilization um, a week ago was at seventy five percent um, for the nation so we're only we're only we're only we're only um, uh, running those refineries at about 75% or three quarters percent. That was, that was, that's a week old data. So um, it could be obviously uh, farther below that now as we speak, but um, on the good side, uh, you, you obviously heard um, over the weekend and later part of last week um, plans uh, from our federal government and down to our state government uh, to begin the reopening process of the, um, of, of the economy. Um, which I think is a, uh, it, it, if, if, if absolutely nothing else, it's, it's, um, it begins to give hope um, and positive news, um, pushing the needle in a, in a positive direction as far as those of us out there trying to keep the economy going and, and re-engage um, uh, people with their normal lives. 
So I know we've got to go through quite a process to get there and it will be a phased approach to, to bring the economy back online. But um, uh, the fact that the needle has tipped and we, and we begin to kind of look at those plans now to make that happen. I know the governor's begin um, making uh, uh, his plans to reopen retail, uh, which, which if nothing else gets people driving um, and helps those retail uh, outlets that uh, have really taken it um, on the chin as far as restaurants and retail and, and that type of thing. Um, so, so we're moving in a positive direction on the overall economy um, here along the Houston Ship Channel. Um, it's been an interesting dynamic. Um, so the chemical industry is um, uh, uh, essential uh, for, for a multitude of reasons. Um, so our petrochemical plants have, um, have gone through extensive um, implementation of processes to keep their employees safe and to keep their, their facilities running. Um, I, I said this before, but I'll say it again. I don't think that there is a single industry more um, more better, if that's the right way to say it. Uh, uh, those are technical terms. Um, I don't think there's another industry that was, that was better equipped to go through a process of, of safety and health evaluation and, and security in order to um, maintain their processes and to keep their people safe. Everything from um, uh, obviously removing all non-essential personnel from facilities, um, reducing some of the, um, the scheduled maintenance, segregation of workforces, um, whether it be operations out in the facility, um, closing um, uh, uh, control rooms uh, to keep people safe, not have traffic come through, um, uh, to keep people uh, even extended um, uh, 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 hours of, of, uh, of work, um, and, and rotations so that they can, they can keep those people safe and, and uh, kind of sequestered. Um, so a lot of different things have gone into the chemical industry to, to be able to maintain that production and that safety um, and certainly the health of their employees. Now, in, in conversations with a lot of our, uh, of our chemical industry, um, uh, most of the facilities um, trying to look so yeah I've got quotes from some of our our facilities that you know all operations units um, are, are operating between 90 and 100 um, percent you know all unit operations are sold out the, the, there there has been um, there's been a few specific product lines that that the industry makes for the automotive industry that there's obviously been um, a, a pullback um, the OEM uh, uh, assembly plants um, have completely shut down. And so that product, um, that product uh, uh, supply chain has basically stopped. But there have been others, obviously, in food packaging, in medical supplies, in the resins and polymers that go into all of that medical industry um, have, have seen an uptick. So you, you've, you've got an industry that is pretty nimble, um, but at the same time, maintaining its production levels. Um, and, and we haven't seen a backup yet um, and I say yet because there has to be, but we haven't seen a, a huge backup um, in the um, supply chain that is produced by the chemical industry. One of the key indicators that I always look at is our daily um, vessel movements along the Houston Ship Channel. Um, and through Q through Q1, uh, we were at or ahead of um, last year's uh, average. Uh, we were right for Q1, uh, kind of year over year, and then we were uh, actually looking at the number right now. Q1 was exactly the same vessels per day. It's almost 50 large vessels per day that they move along the ship channel, wow. um, and it was almost exactly what it was last year. Um, uh, Q2 is still uh, on average um, year to date. Now, how that how that feeds into the rest of April and May, we may see a little bit of a pullback there, but. But as of right now, the vessels are as of last week, uh, this is Monday as we sit here, April 20th, but um, as of last week, we were still pretty much on average um, the number of vessels coming into the ship channel and going out of the ship channel. So um, the product continues to be made. Uh, demand uh, for a lot of those products um, uh, does not wane um, even during this time, which is good news for this region. Um, it could have been hit uh, tremendously uh, harder um, had that not been the case. There will obviously be some some pullback um, as as product supply chains fill up. Um, so the quicker we can reopen the the um, 
uh, the economy safely, then uh, the, the the quicker that those uh, those um, uh, supply chains will pull back towards uh, some sort of normal um, uh, demand, uh, which will definitely help our industry um, in the long term. So, so that's a quick that's a quick overview. I know we went we touched on a yeah, lot of things there, but um, I know there was a lot of project work that had been lined up. We were really ex excited and enthused about that project work walking into the year. I think we had a good two years of inventory of stuff that was getting done. And but really the subs, right? A lot of the work and our industrial contractors going into the plants, they've been pulled out if that, that that's correct. But what does that project work look like out into the future? I mean, are, are those things still in line? Are those projects still going to get completed? Is that the plan or tell us? So a couple, yeah, good, good, good question. Um, you know, how's this going to affect our, our industrial large cap projects? Uh, two, two quick things. First, um, uh, as I may have mentioned, um, small cap projects, maintenance projects um, uh, have been, a lot of that has been temporarily delayed just for safety reasons so that, so that the number of contractors coming in and out of the facilities um, uh, are, are reduced to, to as, as, as few as possible. So you've got regularly scheduled maintenance projects that will be pushed back, you know, one month, two months, three months, possibly even into into three or four months um, as we as we come out of this. Um, large cap projects which are underway, which were in construction as we went into this this um, this this uh, shutdown kind of of the economy. M most of those have continued um, uh, their their construction just with tweaks as to, as to um, how many people are working on them, how they're phasing in their contractors and how they're separating those contractors. There were a few that were, that were shut down temporarily while they adjusted um, and made, you know, kind of put the process into play where they could bring those contractors safely in and out, testing them every day as they come in and out of the gates, things like that. So all of the large cap projects, which were already in, in construction, um, uh, everything that I've heard is that that all of those projects will continue. Um, uh, it's just it's just uh, you know working through the process of safety and how that happens. Now the the bigger question is okay, what does this do to planned projects that had not um, that had not entered construction yet? Um, and I think we can safely say that there will be some some delays um, and some some holds. Um, on, on those on those future projects, we were entering a phase of expansion here where where um, the expectation for large cap projects um, begins to begins to decline. Um, we've had nearly a decade of consistent um, kind of repositioning of assets to the Gulf Coast. That was entering its its waning uh, part of the bell curve, as it were, anyway. Um, and for the next five years, we were expecting that to begin to tail off. I think this obviously, um, this kind of shock to the to the system and to demand and what it's doing to prices, um, uh, especially how the way that um, natural gas interacts with naphtha off of crude, with crude at eighteen dollars a barrel, um, they can make this product elsewhere um, off of crude, just like we make it off of natural gas. So all of those yeah. equations begin to come into play as to where capital investment, where production will be located globally. Um, and so I think you will see this um, accelerate um, the slowdown in capital projects, large cap projects, um, say $100 million and above. You know, our average, our average project on, on average capital size, a project that we've been working on has, has been you know, in ex well in excess of $100 million over the last eight wow. years uh, of the project work that goes on there. Regularly, you see billion dollar projects. Well, that I think is obviously, um, uh, we're on the tail end of that curve as, as we speak right now. And like I said, I believe that this will um, expedite or accelerate kind of the pullback on that as global dynamics shake out from this. Everybody's gonna wait, wait and see what really happens before they continue to invest their money, so. Well, on a positive note, um, from a from a jobs perspective, my understanding is, uh, you know, if, if we were going up 225 and around 146, anything inside those gates and the things that get things in and out of those gates, we haven't really seen as much disruption. I know it's been pretty significant across retail and 
uh, in the upstream sector, but we haven't really seen any uh, loss as of yet inside of the plants, have we? No, I think, I, I think, as I mentioned, I, I mean, I, the, the, word, the word that I get is that, that operations are normal right now. Uh, now what Thank that, God for that. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we're really blessed in that sense. Now, what that means, you know, um, uh, 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, I don't think you'll see anything like layoffs in our, in our owner-operator companies, um, but, but certainly um, delayed maintenance, um, delayed large cap projects, but those maintenance projects will come back as soon as, as soon as, um, we, we, we re reach, um, kind of a normal, um, situation, all that maintenance has to be done. Um, right. you can only delay it for so long. So, um, contractors will be back, uh, back working in plants, um, you know, probably this summer I would anticipate. Good, good. And I know, uh, and we won't dive too far into it, but, uh, we talked a lot, uh, before the call about the safety, uh, really going on in and out of the plants. You touched on it briefly, but I think that, um, you know, safety has always been a top priority and my understanding, and we'll, we'll, this will really help us parlay into the next part of our conversation, which is the work that's gone into securing safety devices, uh, thermometers, all those things to make sure that we're mitigating risk and people's health uh, inside the plant. So I know that's been a critical thing. I know you guys have done some work. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the backdrop, some of the work that's been going on behind the scenes from your organization across all sectors to really help uh, find and procure uh, or create opportunities that would uh, help keep the engine running, right? I think you've had some pretty cool stories to share. So we'd love to hear those. And then uh, you know, we're getting close, so we'll take a couple more minutes to cover that. Sure, sure. And I'll just, uh, first off, the, the, the industry, like I said, is, is the best equipped industry to, to really um, handle this type of situation with its processes and its safety. And, and uh, uh, one thing I will touch on that I, that I think is important to say is that um, uh, TCEQ EPA has not relaxed any limits or, or um, uh, regulations on the environmental requirements that the industry has had to adhere to across this, this time period. So the industry has done a fantastic job of continuing to operate, but operate cleanly and safely um, and environmentally consciously. So there's that that, that has currently happened. But as far as the economic alliance goes, you know, I, I, um, I love the way that our chairman, Steve Cody, says that we are, we are the connectors. Um, we are facilitators. Our members are, are what makes us so strong. And when we as an organization can help each other uh, with the, um, with the, um, with the, the, the attributes that each other has, um, it really becomes kind of, uh, it, it's fun to see that in action. So you, over the last month now, we've seen just example after example of members connecting with the Alliance and the Alliance being able to connect those members with other members or organizations, um, you know, from Galveston to Houston, um, to be able to solve um, technical problems that come with the coronavirus uh, lockdown, you know, um, everything from rapid testing uh, equipment to um, permits to fly crews in offshore to um, uh, locating uh, 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 thermometers for, for testing, um, everything from uh, uh, finding parking spaces for um, our, our rental fleets that, that aren't in, in use right now. So you've, wow. got, you've got commercial and, and, and even private rental, you know, rental vehicles that just aren't being used right now. So um, you know, that becomes a, an, an inventory problem, a, a logistics problem, just like our crude oil and just like our chemical products uh, come, becomes that type of problem. So on kind of all different fronts, we've been able to um, serve as that connector uh, which is really rewarding. It really makes me proud of this organization to see the the, the members helping the community and other members um, as we go through this and try and handle new problems that we hadn't seen before. So it's been it's been um, it's been fun to see that work and and really kind of watch those members work for each other. So a lot of that's gone on behind the scenes um, and and continues to. And that's why we're here. Um, that's that's part of that's part of who we are and what we're trying to do anything that we can do to help make business work better and to help keep this economy um, moving in a positive direction. That's, that's our goal and that's our mission. Well, yeah, we talk about it all the time, but our, our organization and the members of, inside of it are, are always stepping up, uh, committed to the region and collaboratively working together. This is just another example of that. 
Um, I think too, and I would encourage those that are watching the show right now or tuning in, if you're not already following uh, the Economic Alliance Port Regions uh, page or their LinkedIn page or Facebook page, it's critical to do that because you guys have had some phenomenal podcasts, webin or webinars, different series of economic updates, oil and gas updates, and even things that were helping along the SBA issue, uh, which we're hoping again, we'll get some more resolution this week. But uh, as that was coming through, you guys, guys were making resources available to your members and to the community, uh, which again is a testament to the work that you guys do behind the scenes. So again, thank you for the hard work. Um, as we look to transition and exit uh, uh, the rest of the show, uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about next steps? What is the balance of this? Really, where are we going from here? I mean, uh, obviously there's a lot of, uh, things up in the air. So they're, they're, we, we know it's subject to change uh, today. Uh, but that being said, what does the calendar look like? What is the, what is the team working on right now for things that are coming up? So as far as the Economic Alliance, um, our task forces um, and our staff, um, we're still working on all fronts, whether it's um, workforce development. Um, uh, Patty Bell, who heads that up, has, has gone uh, pretty much virtual, uh, created videos, and is pushing that out to our to our, um, our school districts, which still need content uh, as, as students are, are gonna be you know, um, learning from home the rest of this school year. Um, uh, Regina is working on, on over 30 projects. Um, it will be interesting to see. We probably had three or four projects that are gonna come to fruition this year, but, um, but between coronavirus um, uh, and, and obviously an election year, this was, the election year was gonna put a, a damper on, on projects as we approach the election anyway. Right. Um, I anticipate um, a lot of projects just basically be put on hold until next year. Um, so we'll see a few wins this year uh, that we know that, that are in the process that were, that were down the pipeline. Um, but, uh, but we will, we will probably um, not see a lot of, of wins on the, on the, on the uh, project side. Um, you know, we're still marketing this region um, in every way that we can. And, and part of that is, um, is, is just sharing the right amount of information, communicating with our elected officials. Um, we've, we've sat down personally with um, uh, Senator Cornyn. Uh, we're scheduled to talk with Senator Cruz. Um, we've been in constant communication with um, Congressman Babin. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to maintain the ability to be um, that connector and to push the agenda of uh, the Houston Port Regions economy and, and all those projects here uh, along the ship channel. So as, you know, as close to normal as we can, uh, we're moving, uh, moving things forward. Um, our Gulf Coast Industry Forum scheduled for September 17th should come off um, on time. Uh, obviously the topic uh, becomes how we dealt with this and what the future looks like after this. Uh, but I think that's going to be fascinating, um, and 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 we've already seen a lot of um, support for that for that uh, project and event this year. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. So great, great. Well, Chad, um, I, I know I was talking to somebody before uh, or over the weekend, and I think the answer he said. Uh, so what happens when everything opens? You know, we get back to normal, and I said, well, I don't think normal is going to be normal for a while. Right. And so, um, but the uh, ability to, for everybody to adapt, the organization to adapt the, the virtual meetings, the, uh, the, the camaraderie of individuals stepping up from the region, trying to find, I see it all the time through LinkedIn and through social media channels, uh, our actual members and people within the region uh, and our local politicians, everybody stepping up to find answers and now create new methods of communication, ways to get things resolved, uh, going out of the, you know, what was normal 30 days ago is uh, maybe what feels normal today is going to be, be a piece of normalcy next, next, in the next 90 days, maybe six months. We don't know. Yeah. So I think it's interesting, but it's always a, a testament to leadership, leaders like yourself. And so I want to thank you for that, uh, for leading the organization, also for um, really all of our, our members and, and individuals, the, the business owners, the stakeholders. There's a lot of people, I think, putting in extra time right now uh, that they weren't putting in 30 days ago. And it's not, to uh, you know, it's to keep water out of the boat. It's not to you know, it's not to be going full speed ahead. It's to keep water out of the boat, and, and sometimes that's not the easiest work. So, thank you for your hard work. Thanks to the team. Um, anything else that you want to say before we uh, we tune out? No, I think that's it. Uh, I really appreciate your effort, um, our ability to communicate with our members and to push information out. I think you'll see that um, really ramp up here as 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 we move forward over the next 
uh, week or two. I know we've got several people kind of um, teed up uh, to come through the podcast. And yep. so I think this is one of the best ways to communicate. Um, quick bursts of great information to keep people um, updated, I think is the way to go. Um, and you're the one that's helping make that happen, Jason. So I really appreciate it. Well, appreciate you, Chad. And uh, we'll tune in uh, next week for, for our audience. Uh, if you're watching and listening to the show, uh, please, again, stay tuned in. Uh, you can subscribe to our channels. We're going to have several individuals, people from Kelsey Siebold, uh, different individuals and in local uh, legislation, different individuals that are uh, serving within organizations uh, locally uh, that are going to come on the show in the next few weeks that are going to help share what's really going on behind the scenes. So stay tuned in and we'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Thank you, Jason. Thanks.